Hello everyone, welcome back to the Rocks and Change YouTube channel. My name's Fleur Hastings and today I'm going to show you how to make this absolutely stunning chainmail weave called Dragon Scale. So as you can see, Dragon Scale is a real beautiful, dense weave and it really does look like Dragon Scale. Some people say it looks like fish scales as well, but it's absolutely beautiful. It is actually constructed of two sheets of a European one variant called Snakeskin um basically stitched together but we don't actually make it like that we make it a little bit different but it is so beautiful so this is a cuff bracelet as you can see it makes quite a wide a beautiful wide statement piece of jewelry it does use a lot of jump rings now this is completely stone and silver this one um this is my personal bracelet that i absolutely love um you can make it narrower um, but for the purposes of this demonstration, we're going to do four rows wide and then three. So four and three, four and three. Um, I've got some kits on my website, which I will link in the description below on the actual pendant itself. So how to make the pendant. So again, you can see that gorgeous, beautiful pattern that this creates so to make this um chainmail weave we need jump rings that are an aspect ratio of around 6.1 and 3.9 okay so what i've used um for this particular pendant is i've used jump rings that are 5.5 in a diameter made on a 0.9 wire and I've made uh, the small jump rings on a 3.5 uh, mandrel in a diameter on a 0.9 wire so that gives you that perfect aspect ratio of 6.1 for the large jump rings and 3.9 for the small jump rings so what you're going to need to actually make this is you're going to use your trusty your trusty pliers Again, as usual, I'm using my chisel nose and my bent nose pliers. They're just my favorite. These are my Zuron pliers. I absolutely love these, but any um, chain nose or flat nose pliers will be absolutely fine. No round nose pliers because they will um, slip off the rings and mark them. I also use a, a knotting awl or something like that just to help me decipher which rings are next because the jet rings that I'm going to show you in are large jet rings, but you can actually... Um, when the smaller jump rings it can be a little bit difficult to see which is the next jump ring so anything like this darning needles um pokey tools if you're a card crafter um this is a knotting or like i say but even just a, a scrap piece of wire or an unbent paper clip so if you unbend a paper clip that would be absolutely fine too so let's get started so to make this week we're going to actually make ourselves a little um if you like, uh, what, what would you call it? Uh, a pattern, basically. So you need a piece of paper, and I've already done the pattern on one side, which is why you can see the writing on the other side. Um, because believe it or not, this is the second time I've done this video, but that's, that's another story. So we're going to be doing, I can't even spell dragon scale now, look. You know, we have one of those days. Okay, so we're going to use, be doing dragon scale. And our jump ring key is going to be one horizontal dash for our large jump rings. And one vertical dash for our small jump rings. Okay, so that's our key, just so we know what we're doing. Okay, and I'll just draw a line under this because this pattern is a repetitive pattern. The first few rows that you're going to do don't repeat. Um, it only starts to repeat um, from row four onwards. Okay, so I'm just going to move this to the side and we'll use that in a second. So the first thing we want to do is we want to attach, we want to get four large jump rings. Okay, now like I say, this is a four, um, this one is four wide, but you could do three wide if you want. You could do a three and a two. Um, I'm just going to do a four and a three just to make, because it gives it that nice little width there. So I've started off by placing down four large jump rings. So if I get my pattern and I'm going to write down four large jump rings and that was row one. So row one is four large jump rings, okay? Row two, we're connecting 
large jump rings with three small jump rings. Okay, so we're just connecting those together. So we're going to put three small jump rings in, which was row two. Okay, so four large, three small. Now what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that these small jump rings are pointing in the way that we're going to chain mail. So I'm chain mailing towards me, so from north to south. So these are pointing down like to the south. So they're just slanting this way all the time. So they're not facing. If I show you how they would look if I was chain mailing away from me, can you see the difference? They're now pointing away. But I want them to point towards me. It's really important that you make sure that they are pointing the way that you're going. Okay, what we're going to do now is we're going to take three large jump rings. And as you can see, I'm going to be using different colored jump rings. I'm just going to zoom in so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to be using different colored jump rings so you can see the rows a little bit better. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to place those three large jump rings over the top of the three small jump rings. Okay, so back to my pattern. So I've got three large jump rings, which is row three. Okay, so there you go, row three, three large jump rings. Like I said, this bit doesn't repeat. This is just the beginning of your of your weave, uh, the way that I construct it. So there is lots of different ways that you can make dragon scale, but this is the way that I find easiest. So our next row is going to emulate what this first row did, these gold jump rings here. So I've got four large jump rings. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach them to the small jump rings. Now, one of the rules of um, Dragon Scale is we never attach a large jump ring to a large jump ring or a small jump ring to a small jump ring. We only ever attach a large to a small and a small to a large. Okay, so only picking up the small jump ring I'm just going to pick up that small jump ring with my large jump ring and close. Okay, that's my first one in place. I'm going to take my second jump ring and I'm going to go from this red jump ring over to this red jump ring, making sure that I only pick up those two small jump rings and close. And you'll see that it sits directly on top or slightly further down, but you, you know what I mean. It's in di it's in line with the one that was previous. So you can see these two are now matching up. I'm going to take my next open jump ring, make sure that that purple jump ring doesn't fall off. And I'm going to go from this middle jump ring here, this red jump ring, over to the loose free red jump ring here. And you can see as, as, as I'm going, I'm sandwiching those purple jump rings in place. So there's my next jump ring. Okay, and I've now got a fourth jump ring, which just goes through this last red jump ring. Okay, and close. So now I've got four orange jump rings in my pattern. So I can go along now and I can add the so row, row four. You can see there, four large jump rings, okay? Now, what we need to do now is we need to attach the purple jump rings together because they're not, they're just sitting there at the minute. They're not actually attached to anything. So we need to attach them here and here, so across the middle, but it's got to stay within this orange jump ring. So the connection is going to be there and the connection here. We're also going to put two loose jump rings on onto the end. So four jump rings are going to go in place. It's going to be one here on this purple jump ring, one connecting these two purple jump rings, one connecting these two purple jump rings, and one here. Okay, so let's just put those in. I'm going to use my pliers just to help me attach these in. So the first one's easy. That just goes onto that purple jump ring. You can see I'm staying within this orange jump ring. So there's that one there, and you can see it's just sitting, and this is going to move around a little bit, so you just have to bear with me. I will put it straight again once I've got these in. So my second jump ring is just picking up those two purple jump rings. Again, I'm not picking up any other jump rings, just those two. So none of the orange jump rings are getting picked up 
just those two purples. Okay, and my next one's going in again now when you've got the correct size and you're you're making this at home or wherever you're making this make sure you don't dig down too deep so this is the row when people are connecting within a large jump ring so when they're connecting like the row previous um they can get a little bit stuck because it's they're digging down too deep into the weave and they're picking up other jump rings you only need to pick up those two for those center two these two on the end is literally just the very last jump ring it's just hooking on to that purple jump ring now i don't know if you can see but we're never working on the row that's on the top we're always working on the row that's underneath okay so the orange row was the row on the top and we've just added those to the row underneath so that's another rule of um, dragon scales you only only work on the row underneath never the row that's on the top now the other thing to note is that these blue jump rings here are sitting underneath these red ones so they're the lowest ones down so we can see here that they're just lower than the red jump rings so now let's go in and place in our pattern row five so I've just added four vertical jump rings or small jump rings. Sorry, vertical jump rings, vertical lines for my four small jump rings. Okay, so now what we need to do is we're going to emulate what the purple row do next. So I need three open large purple jump rings. And they're going to be exactly the same place where these are. So again, I'm, I'm going to use the jump rings that I've just added to connect this row together but we know that it's the row underneath because like we said before this orange row here is the row on top this is the row that's underneath the one that we've just added so I'm going to go through and I'm picking up just those blue jump rings so there's one there's two And then the third one, make sure it's facing down towards the way that I'm going. And there's three. Okay. So I've now got my three large jump rings in place. So I can go here and I can add my three, that's row six, my three large jump rings that I've just added in. Now, with all chainmail, there's a row that can be quite tricky. Now, this next row is always that one. Okay. So what we have to do now is we have to connect the orange row together. So I've got three small jump rings here, and my connections are going to be across this bridge here from orange to orange, across this bridge here from orange to orange, and from across this bridge here from orange to orange so again using these three gaps here if you like as where I need to go I need to attach them into those three gaps but they've got to sit underneath this previous small jump ring row now with dragon scale the other thing is if your dragon scale starts to lock up it's mainly because the small jump rings aren't sitting inside the large jump rings. They have to sit inside the large jump rings. And it's quite easy just to pop them back in place. Um, with the correct size aspect ratio, it doesn't really um, happen that much. Um, these are my large demo jump rings, so they are going to slip out of place all the time. But I'll try and keep them in place where I can. So my first large, uh, small jump ring sorry, is going to go into this connection here so like I said before across the little bridge from orange jump ring to orange jump ring and close making sure that it sits underneath the previous blue jump ring so there it is there my next jump ring is going to go in across that bridge and close and then my third jump ring goes in got to open it a little bit longer than that one there third jump ring apologies if this is uh, going 
a little bit out of shot. I'm trying to keep it in shot so that I don't move um, the chainmail too much. Obviously, when you're chainmailing at home, move your chainmail. Don't move your body. Okay, move your chainmail around so it's more comfortable for you. So now those three red jump rings are in place so we can see them here and we know that they're correct because they're sitting directly underneath the previous red jump rings okay so we can see they're all in a line so I can now go in and add my three my three small jump rings in row seven okay so now I can go back to emulating what the orange jump rings are doing now. So I want four gold jump rings. One, two, three, four. Okay, and these are going to just connect exactly the same to the red jump rings that we've just added, but it's the row underneath because the purple row is on the top. The row underneath is the red row. Okay, so there's one. Only attaching small jump rings to the small jump rings never picking up a large jump ring two three and the final one is just going on the end four okay so we've got all of those four jump rings in place the four large orange jump rings i'm going to add those in to my um, pattern, row eight. Now, row eight is exactly the same as row four. So this is where the pattern now starts to carry on. Okay, so I know, looking at my pattern now, so row four was four large, row eight's four large. So the row underneath row four, row five, is four small. So if I get stuck, I can look at my pattern and I know that I've got to add in four small jump rings. Now looking at this pattern now I can see where they're going to go because I've got to connect the purple jump rings together working on the row that's underneath. So the purple jump rings here and here they need connecting. These two here and here need connecting and then my loose two on the end which are the same as these loose blue up here. So taking my small jump rings, put the loose one on the end, making sure it sits the lowest one down. Okay. And again, here and here. And again, again, making sure it's the lowest one down. The next connection is these two. Only those two jump rings we're picking up. Let's just put them back in place. Okay, I'll just put it back so you can see. There we go. And the last one, and to the end jump ring. Now, if this jump ring's in the way, you can always flip that out of the way. Pop that jump ring on. And then flip that one back. That's always a, a, a handy little trick to be able to do, but again, just make sure it's facing the way that you're going. So you would carry on now. So that was row, that's row nine. So I've put in two, three, four, row nine, four small jump rings. Okay, so row nine is the same as row five. So then if I wanted to carry on the pattern, I'd look for the next row, which is row six. And I know I've got to put three large jump rings in. So that's how you're going to carry on going until you've got the desired length. Now to make this into a point, what we're going to do is we're going to add our three large jump rings in. So we're going to now taper this to a point. Just make sure that, that you're only picking up those those jump rings. There we go. There's one large jump ring. One. And two. 
you can see even in these large jumpings it gets very dense very quickly one two and then my final one make sure it's in the correct position it's scooted out of the way hasn't it one two three there we go okay so my next row to bring this down even more is to connect my three small jump rings together again so i'm going to take my next row and i'm going to attach the orange jump rings together like i say you might find it easier to to turn your weave just make sure it's comfortable for you how you're chain mailing so I'm, as you can see i i scoop mine around all over the place move your chain mail don't don't move yourself Okay, so what I've done with this one, I've put that jump ring in, but it's attached itself. I went through the bottom jump ring as well, so no problem. We can just undo it. We can find the join. There it is. So I picked up the bottom purple jump ring as well with that one. So I'm just going to take that jump ring out. Give it a little a chain mail tap, which is a real thing. I don't know if it is a real thing, but I always tap my chainmail just to sort out where they're going and just pick up those two again. So I'm putting in those three small jump rings. So I'm just attaching here, here, go across to this one now. And then my last one is going to be here. Again, just making sure it's just those two that you're connecting. You've not connected anything else. No, that's fine. So I've now got my three in place. I'm now going to take my orange jump rings and instead of putting four in place i'm going to attach just two so i'm just picking up those red jump rings not the purple ones just make sure that they're just the red ones and i'm just going to lift that up because like i say it's just getting a little bit difficult to keep it in 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 focus and it, where it needs to be if I don't lift it up. So I've got my first one in place here. My second one is going to go to here. So you can see we've got a natural. We're starting to bring it down now. That one's just flipped out the other way, that's why. Right. There we go. Let's just sort those out at the top. There and there. There we go. So you can see we're starting to bring it down. I now need to just put in two blue jump rings into these gaps here. So if I pick up my first blue jump ring, and again, just picking up the purple jump rings in this case. There's one. And the second one. It. So I've just got those two blue jump rings, again making sure that they're the lowest ones down. And then to bring it to a final point, we just need one single open jump ring. I'm just connecting that to the large jump, uh, to the small jump ring, sorry, and close. You can see now how we've brought that to a lovely point. So if I just show you on the bracelet being brought down to a really nice point okay so the point is exactly the same now the best thing about dragon scale um what i find is that you can just flip this over and it's exactly the same what you're working on so we've got one point here so we brought that to a point but we might want to make this a little bit longer so when we turn over and we think oh i don't know what we're going to do next but we've got four large jump rings here so we go to our, go to here, and we start to look, I'm just going to fold that over to row four, because that's where our pattern starts to repeat. So row four was four large jump rings. So I know my next row has to be four small jump rings. So they would go one, two, 
three and four and you're back on your pattern again so just have keep having a look at it and the best thing about it as well another good thing i keep saying the best thing it's just an amazing weave but it's the same exactly the same front and back so there's no back and there's no front to it it's exactly the same and you can make this as wide as you want if you want to narrow it down if you want to do a three and a two every row's either got three and two in it as you can see this is a four and a three every row's either got four or three jump rings in it so that's your dragon scale if you like this video give it a thumbs up drop me a little comment if there's any weaves that you'd like me to do drop a comment again down below just to say um could you show me how to make whichever chainmail weave you want um i'd love it if you could subscribe to my channel if you hit the notification button as well that will let you know when my i next post another video but until next time take care happy chain mailing see you soon